Here's the secret to winning this game. The ball travels along these two metal rods, uh, but the metal rods are not flat. This side is higher than that side. It's on an incline like that. So if you just let the ball go, it's gonna go to that side. Now, the physics changes when you open the sticks up, it makes the ball uh, roll this way. But if the sticks are too far open, then the ball is gonna fall down wherever it is. Now, the object of the game is to get the ball to go as far as you can and get it to fall out here uh, on Pluto. Right? And this is a carnival game where if you can do it, you win a big prize. If you go here, maybe no prize. This is a small prize. The prizes get bigger and bigger, but no one can get it all the way here because they're trying these techniques of opening and closing. But when you do that, it's just going to land uh, wherever. Right? So. Then, when you get better and better at the game, what you do is you try to sense when the ball is just about to fall, and then you close the sticks again. That's not the real secret to winning the game. That's just what people do when they try to get better. So they try opening it, and then when it goes, they close it again. They try opening it, and closing it again, opening it. The thing is, when you do that, you're gonna be making mistakes. I'll try, I'll try that technique the best of my ability, the open-close technique. So you open it, and then right when it starts moving, close, open it, close. And then we're at a point though, where now, see when I open it, it's not even going towards me anymore. So eventually I would just have to drop it there. And then I get a Mars, the 500. So that is not the secret uh, to winning this game. The secret to winning this game, and it might take you uh, once or twice to do. So if plays are like a dollar each or five dollar each, then it'll cost you two dollars or, or ten dollars, depending on how much. But the key to winning the game is to only do one open, a big open, and then a close. And then the momentum of the ball, it will take you all the way back. Now, it's a little riskier because when you open it up so wide, there's more chance for the ball to fall out. But there's also fewer chances to make subsequent mistakes. And when you open it wide, when it's right there, that's going to propel it in a way where you don't have to constantly be opening it and closing it. So that, that's the secret of the game. One big open, and then you close it quickly to the point where it doesn't fall, and then you close it more and more as it travels. All right, so we're gonna try this out. One big open, and then close little by little. Here we go, big open, and then close it little by little. And you can see, it goes all the way there. I didn't hit Pluto, so that would be another game here. So let's see, open it all the way, and then close it little by little, almost. One big open, and then just close it little by little, and we got it there in Pluto. Let's see if I can go two or three in a row. Let's see, here we go. Big open, close it little by little. Two in a row, and last time, here we go. Big open, and then close it little by little. Here we go. That is how you win the shoot the moon game every time you win the big prize at the carnival. Tell your friends. There's a simple secret to winning tic-tac-toe every time. And I'm gonna teach you the secret right now. So if you're fighting with your spouse about who's gonna do the dishes, or if you have a friend who is a kid that doesn't wanna go to bed, instead of fighting about going to bed, say, we'll just play a game of tic-tac-toe, and if you lose, you gotta go to bed, or do the dishes or whatever you need. So here's the secret to winning tic-tac-toe. First, you have to go first. And now if the person you're playing against, if they're a good tic-tac-toe player, they might know that the person who goes first to tic-tac-toe has an advantage. So you have to trick the other person into letting you go first. And here's how you do it. You need a coin. Everyone is familiar with flipping a coin as a 50-50 way to determine something, but you're gonna do this, you're gonna be a little sneaky. You have to say this particular thing before you flip the coin, and you have to say exactly this. You have to say, Okay, well, someone's going to be stuck going second, so let's flip a coin to see who it's going to be. Uh, so do you want heads or tails? Uh, I'll take tails. Tails. Mm -hmm. So the other person wants tails, and remember, you've said we'll flip a coin to figure out who's stuck going second. So if I flip heads, I'd say, okay, I won the coin flip, I'm going first. But sometimes I'm going to flip tails. Now here's how that goes. 
before you flip the coin, remember you say, someone's gonna be stuck going second, so let's flip the coin to figure out who it is. They say tails, comes up tails, say, okay, you're stuck going second. So it's heads, you say I win, tails, you say you're stuck going second. Now it comes time to play tic-tac-toe. And here's the big secret. You need to start by going in the corner. A lot of people, they want to go in the middle to start the game. They think that gives them the most possibilities, but they are wrong. You start by going in the corner. Now, the person you're playing against, let's say they go in another corner, right? Then what you want to do is you want to stay in the corners. So you go in a corner, they go in a corner, then you go in another corner. And now watch what happens. They're going to need to block you there. And right after they block you, you take the last corner and you've won the game. Because if they block your middle path here, then you've got this path to victory. Or if they block your path on the side, then you go in the middle and you win this way. So if you go in the corner first, they go in the other corner, you can still win. Now, let's say you go in the corner and they go in uh, one of these side pieces. Now, you can still win if they make a mistake, which they sometimes will. So let's say you go there. Sometimes they might not see to block you. But even if they do see to block you, right, then if you go here, you've given yourself now two chances to win. Where if they go here, you'll win this way. If they go here, you'll win that way. Now, the last possibility, if you go in the corner, is they're going to go in the middle of the board. That probably means that they're a good player, but it's still possible to win. If you go here, and if they go in the middle, then you go the other corner. Now, sometimes they'll make a mistake. If they go in another corner at this point, then you're gonna win. Because when you block them, you've opened up two paths for yourself, and they can only block one of the two paths, and you will win in the other path. And that is the secret to winning tic-tac-toe every time. This game is so hard, but there is a secret to winning every time. I'm gonna tell you what it is. The object of the game is to get the ring around the bottle and then lift the bottle up so it stands straight. But if you've ever seen this game at the carnival or at the fair, uh, you see it is not at all as easy as it looks. Most people can't do it because they don't know the secret. Here's the secret. You have to lift it up in four parts. First part is getting the ring around the bottle. Now, if you're standing up, even that's hard because when you try to put it on the bottle, you're gonna keep missing the bottle like this. It's swinging all over the place. So to start, you wanna put the ring along the side of the bottle's neck and move it little by little so it goes around the neck of the bottle. If you're just trying to swing it on like this, you're gonna use up all your time doing that. So just slow it down, go to the side of the bottleneck, creep around, get it on there. Now, the next part is lifting the bottle up. You lift it up a little bit, but when you lift it up here, the bottle, if you're standing up, it's going to start swinging around and around, and the more it swings, the more it's going to go around the table, and also it might fall out. So after you get the ring around the bottle's neck, the key is you gotta go slow and you just wait until the bottle finds a spot on the table where it slows down naturally. Now the next part is lifting the bottle up. Not all the way straight, but you gotta lift it up. And when you do this, if you go too slow, the bottle is gonna, again, be swinging around the table. But if you go too fast, the bottle just falls out. Here's what's happening here. If you're going fast and if you're not standing the bottle up, here, the ring is around the lip of the bottle. But if you get the bottle more than 45 degrees, then the bottle, uh, it falls through the ring because the lip of the bottle is no longer attached to it. So the third step of this is you lift this up about 45 degrees and then you stop. Because if you don't stop, you try to go up more, the bottle's just gonna fall over. Now, after you get to 45 degrees, this is the last step. What you don't do is just keep pulling up because even if you're going slow and you're pulling up, again, the bottle's gonna fall off. 
So what you need to do is pull the chain so it's going farther than the base of the bottle. Here's what that means. If I start out with the chain uh, on this side, the bottle here, when I'm pulling up the last bit of the way, I don't wanna pull straight up here. I want to move my hand so the chain is going to this side of the bottle. And then it's going to grip this lower part of the bottle rather than the bottle's lip. And that's what you need to pull it up all the way. Now, if you go too fast, it's going to fall far away. If you go too slow, you see what happens, which is it falls over. So you need to go at a medium pace. Even when you know how to do it, it might take a few times, but it should look like this. You get it halfway up. Now I'm waiting for it to slow down. And now rather than pulling up more, I'm going to slowly move forward. Uh, we didn't get it that time. Let's try again. I pull up. Now I stop going up and instead I just slowly take it forward. Oh, we almost had it. Let's try one more time. Here we go. We go up and now slowly pull forward and up. Oh, and there it is.